Good morning, magandang umaga po. We are going to talk today about vaccine. Should you go for vaccination? Should you not? Which vaccine is more effective and which ones are not? We'll talk about that. Stay with me. I received an email from one of my viewers and I'd like to show you what he said. It says, I work for Stanford University and I thought I would share this article with you to enlighten the people in the Philippines. They're saying that the reason why the U.S. is not included in the green country list was because of the Delta variant. This article might help them get educated with our own situation here in the U.S. Julie Parsonet and Yvonne Maldonado are both well-known infectious disease experts and my former boss in the School of Medicine. Thanks. That's the email, and he sent me the link to get to the report. Well, I read the report, and it's quite interesting. Basically, the report says, and this is coming from let's see, Stanford Medicine News. Now let's take a look. A study of workers at Stanford Healthcare found that the mRNA vaccine offered a high level of protection even against a widely circulating variant. We're also going to talk a little bit about how do they how do they determine? How do they calculate what this efficacy rate is? Okay, towards the end. So stay with me until the end. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you about this variant that everybody is worried about. More than 99% of Stanford healthcare employees resisted breakthrough infections after receiving at least one dose of an mRNA based vaccine for COVID 19. Between December 18, 2020 and April 2, 2021, so this is very recent, at least 23,090 employees at Stanford Healthcare received one or two doses of Pfizer or Moderna. So it's either Pfizer or Moderna. I guess they were given the choice. Of the vaccinated individuals, 189 tested positive for COVID-19 or 0.8%. Now keep one thing in mind. After you get the vaccine, it doesn't necessarily mean that, ah, there's no way you can be touched, there's no way you can get this or that. No, 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 no. It reduces the risk of you getting it. And even after you get it, it mitigates the ser seriousness of the situation. In all likelihood, you will not be hospitalized and definitely you will not die. Whereas if you don't have it, very serious. Don't expect vaccine to solve 100% of the problem. Some people say, oh, I'm not going to get vaccinated. After vaccination, they still get this and that. And No, 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 no. Those are very, very little. Those are minute. And I'm going to show you the result of this test. And this just happened up to April 2nd, 2021. Just what? Two, two months ago or so. By contrast, at least 660 of approximately 6,910, nearly 10% of unvaccinated workers became infected with coronavirus. <clears throat> so those who got inoculated, 0.8%, and those who did not, 10%. That's a big percentage difference. They further analyzed the 189 who were tested positive. Now, this is going to be a little bit complicated, but then towards the end here, I mean, at the bottom, I'm going to show you a graph that will help illustrate that point. 60% or 114 of the infectious infections occurred two weeks or less after the first shot. An additional 26% or 49 people emerged more than two weeks after the first dose and less than two weeks after the second dose. Taken together, 86% of the individuals who tested positive after vaccination did so before immunity fully developed. Let's take a look at this. 
you get the first shot on day one. You don't get the second shot until two weeks later. And they say that it does not get fully effective or active until two weeks after the second shot. Of the 189 that we're talking about who got COVID, 114 of them was during the first two weeks. You were already told you get vaccinated today. It doesn't mean oh, you're immune right away. No, no, no. It takes two weeks. So 114 got infected. After the second shot, two weeks later, another 49 people was infected. And then after four weeks, that means from the very beginning, two weeks, two weeks, so at the end of the four weeks, after the four weeks, 26 infection. So that is the breakdown of the 189. First two weeks, 114. Second two weeks, 49. And then 26. So you can see that it's progressively getting more and more effective as time goes on. So that's the makeup of the 189. The percentage, 60%. These first two weeks, 26%, second two weeks, and only 14% during the last, after the four weeks, four week period. Now, that's percentage of the 189. Now, what is that as a per percentage of the total of the 23,090? That's only 0.5%. The first two weeks, again, it's not effective yet. Then, second shot becoming more effective 0.2 after that it's only 0.1 percent very important okay now would you rather take 10 percent chance of getting covid or 0.1 percent <laughs> i guess that's a question you will have to ask Ooh, that's what that's 100 times greater than if you got the, the vaccine now this is what they say uh this is the published efficacy rates okay again i got this from the material posted down below you can go ahead and take a look at it if you want to read it pfizer is 95 percent moderna is 90 percent johnson and johnson 72 percent astrazeneca is 73 percent novavax is 90 percent sinovac is 51 percent now this test done by Stanford University or medical school is combination of Pfizer and Moderna. So they were injected with Pfizer and Moderna. So we will look at this as a group. So this is what, what we're going to talk about is not efficacy of Pfizer or Moderna. It's a combination of two. This is how efficacy rate is being calculated and almost everything that I have seen does it this way. They said, they look at the vaccinated ones, 23,000 people, 189 got infected or 0.819%. Okay. I'm vaccinated, 9.551%. Then you divide 0.819 by 9.551 and you come up with 0 0.086. Deduct that from one and you come up with the 91.4% efficacy rate. Now this rate, again, is combination of Pfizer and Moderna. This is what I don't understand. I understand the first one, vaccinated is 0.8%, and vaccinated is 9.51. But why did they divide one from the other, deducted it from one, came up with 91.4? I was struggling with this. With my simple mind, I said, why did I do that? What does it mean? What's the relationship of vaccinated against unvaccinated? Well, don't worry about it because that is just an algebraical formula. I'm going to show you how it is computed using a common sense approach. Casualty rate if all are vaccinated. So the, the sum of the 23,090 and the 6,910, that's 30,000 people vaccinated, okay? If, if everybody was vaccinated, 0.819 times 30,000, that means 246 people would have been infected. What's the casualty rate if all are unvaccinated, no vaccine? It's 30,000 times 9.551, right? So 2,865 people 
would have been infected. So there is an improvement. What is the improvement? From the 2865, you saved 246. Not you saved, you shaved that down to 246. That means 2,619 were saved from the disaster. You divide that by 2,865, okay, and you get the same 91.4%. So the 91.4% means and if they got the vaccine, that is how many people were saved, okay, from getting the uh, coronavirus. Now, keep in mind, this is including casualties before the vaccine took effect. Look at, let's take a look at the uh, previous uh, uh, slide. The 189 here includes 114 that already got sick shortly after getting the shot. It's not, the shot is not effective yet. Then the second shot, they, again, they, they got, they, we have 49 casualties. And then after that, that's the real, okay, residual number of people who were infected in spite of the vaccine. Again, because there is no guarantee on any vaccine, but that's only point 0.1, that's minuscule, minuscule. If we go back to the previous formula and we apply only 26 instead of 189, that means the efficacy rate is like over 99%. That's pretty good. So again, the, the question there is, would you rather take 10% chance of getting COVID or point 0.1? Now, Let's talk about the Delta variant. It could, the, del, the rise of Delta variant, also known as California variant, is prompting some public health officials to issue new warnings urging more caution at the time when vaccinated people are putting away masks and getting back to normal life. Although those who have been fully vaccinated are believed to have high levels of protection, there is growing concern about the virus is spreading among people who have not been inoculated. That's according to LA Times. Okay, so there's a lot of concern, but they're not concerned about the vaccinated people because there's some indication that the fully vaccinated ones are believed because we will we'll find more about this. We'll find out more about this, but they're believed to have high level of protection the concern is about the people who have never been inoculated. Evidence, this is again from Stanford uh, Medicine, evidence from clinical trials has suggested that Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are approximately 95% effective at preventing COVID-19. During the new study, a variant called B1 blah 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 or Epsilon was rapidly spreading in California and becoming the dominant virus in circulation. But the researchers found no evidence that the mRNA vaccine are less effective against the Epsilon variant. Approximately 40% of healthcare personnel who tested positive for coronavirus had this variant regardless of whether they had been vaccinated. The similar proportion of variant among vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals suggests that the Epsilon variant is no more likely to break through vaccine protection. So there is all this concern about the Delta variants, I mean variant, but as research shows, again, this is continually being monitored and being researched. There are indications that those who have been inoculated also has the protection for the same. Their concern is for people who have not been inoculated because, because this variant is not necessarily more dangerous, but it's more contagious. It spreads more rapidly than the previous variant. So guys, the question I will ask you is this, should you be inoculated or not? I'm receiving a lot of uh, comments from people who, is, it's very obvious, you are attempting, attempting to scare people and say, oh, don't do that because they will change your DNA 
Ah, uh, if you are a woman, you will no longer have a child, or you may no longer have a child. You will not see the effect until maybe ten years, five years, ten years from now. Oh, don't don't do that because they will put a chip in your uh, body. Uh, the the other one is uh, oh you can get a magnet and put it here and you will see that it, there there is there is a metal there that goes into your body it's so ridiculous fake news is scale mongering don't listen to it the best thing to do is listen I mean if you have an allergy I can understand that don't take it okay because if you're allergic to all those vaccines and sensitive to medicine or whatnot you have a reason to be worried about it and not take it. Uh, if you consult with a doctor and you have some condition that makes it dangerous for you to take it, don't take it. But if you're just scared because of everything you're hearing, don't worry about it. Don't get scared. Now, uh, if uh, you're worried because you're scared of the needle, just like me, a few years ago, believe it or not, I was scared of needles. I will not go to the doctor for me to get my blood test unless my wife is with me holding my hands. <laughs> how silly is that? Well, several years ago, I learned how to do it on my own. So, But I can understand people, especially men, who are scared of needles. Don't get scared because it's a scarier if you run this risk. So the uh, vaccine, I'm convinced, is more effective than what people are really talking about or saying. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist but I have judgment. And that's all you need to use when it comes to this. Listen to people and see which one, try to screen out or filter out which one is fake news, which one is false, which one is not. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that the coronavirus deaths are exaggerated. Why? Compared to other diseases? Maybe this is less serious, but People were scared because there was no cure for it, and it spreads rapidly. If you have a flu, no problem, because they can fix that. There was no medicine, no nothing, and therefore people were reacting. That's what you need to understand. So guys, I would recommend that you get it and be able to relax a little bit. Again, no guarantee that once you get this vaccine that you will never fall down. You could still fall and be sick, but you are not going to wind up in the hospital or face a death sentence. That's what I would recommend. So please, let's get the country, United States, Philippines, and other countries of the world to get vaccinated. I would encourage you to do that. If you have any comments, questions, as long as they are not uh, fear-mongering type comment, please do add them below. I'll take a look at it. And I hope it helps other people as well, including those who support the vaccination effort. Thank you so much. Please share this with other people. God bless and make it a great day.